YouTube, it's Brian Phillips, another garbage bag special. It's been a while since I did this because there's been a little thing going around. There has? Somewhere. Really? Yeah. Missed it. You didn't miss it. <laughs> and I, I understand that the origins of this thing going around happen to coincide with my hobby's birthplace. <laughs> okay, enough, enough of that. Let's get back to the DHL packaging. Oh my goodness, why do they do this to me? This is an unboxing, and as usual, when something comes from Banggood, it kind of, you know, they're just like, here, yeah, throw a little tape here, a little tape there, a little garbage bag there, and then you end up with, you end up with, whoa, yeah, baby, a veto. That is cool. Age is 14 plus. Oh, sorry to confiscate that from you. 14 plus, people. Keep it legal. I don't know where they come up with 14. Evidently, that's the magic age. Okay. <clears throat> so, jeez, get off of there. It's also, since it's 14 plus, it's also zero through Not three. Not zero no. through three. <laughs> zero through threeers. Whoa, look Ooh. at that. That is definitely a dang good special. Okay, well, oh wow, we got another. Wow. Oh, Whoa. geez. Usually when there's holes like this, things don't end well. But I've been surprised before. It's true. All right, here we go, guys. This is why you watch unboxings, folks, so you know what type of holes to expect in your things. Because otherwise you could literally just order it and open the box yourself from the link below. What's the fun of that? The fun in ordering it from the link no, below? No, the fun in opening it yourself. Oh, I can't get it out because of the damage. Oh no. Uh, oh yeah, baby, I think we made it. From China land. Look, safe Ooh. and secure. Listen. What do we have here? We'll have to see if it'll come out because the, <laughs> the cardboard ripped down. This is the way all unboxings go. I just kind of like, you know, like a kid opening a Christmas present. It's an airplane! I'm gonna finish like an adult opening a toy. Well, that looks like everything made it, guys. There was a hole here and there was a hole there and whoa, buddy. Thank you, DHL. Something's coming out the bottom of it? Oh, it's uh, the a rain. transmitter. Yeah. Okay, so when you pick this up, be careful. Whoa. It's a different transmitter. It is? Yeah. Well, it is. Oh, because this is JJRC, not it's XK. XK. I thought it was XK. But that's okay, because look, they have the labels on it. That's really nice. M, M mode, 6G mod, V mode. They forgot the E on there. I forgive them. Feels like everything is kind of a little bit loose, but I don't mind that. Compared to the XK oh, controller. Wait. There's an itty bitty teeny teeny tiny screw. Screw. Can't even see you it. See the difference here, guys? So this hmm. this I don't know if this is Futaba F H S S S F H S S. What'd you find? A screw. screw. That's always a good sign. Huh. I wonder where that came. It didn't come from these. It was oh. like way over here too. Baby. Well, we'll hang on to that. It must have been from ripping the box up like a really smart person. Nice canopy. It's clear. You can see through it. Hmm. That's awesome. Um, okay. Looks like we got a 1000 milliamp 3S. 3S. 1, 2, 3, 4 wires. And then a XT30 main discharge connection. This is a 20C pack. That's pretty crappy. But we'll see. Probably doesn't need any more than that or they would have sent more than that. There's a plug here that allows you to rotate this out. Nice shipping container actually. <laughs> Maybe not so much the box. This feels really light though. That's nice. Oh buddy, it's got, does it have lights on it? It does. Awesome. I didn't think this thing had lights on it, guys. Look at these stickers. Seriously? <laughs> I 
Oh, I I'm, tried. I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of this right now. Ah, dang it, it holds down wires. I was, I was gonna take them off right now. The servos look like they're equally... Oh, there's the screw, I bet. Nope, that's not the screw. That just came off. Did it break out? No, it's just not done. That's kind of weird. Okay, so it's pre-broken for me. Not surprised, just... Ooh, I bet the screw came out of one of these. No, no, no. This is just unhooked. Those are LEDs. I didn't know that this thing was gonna have LEDs. I'm really excited about that. I was under the impression this thing was not gonna have LEDs. Oh, the screws hold the wings in. See? Oh no, look at that. There's a little bit of a squish. Just a squish. No big deal. It'll be fine. Where did you put that screw? Here's, here's two screws. Spare props. It's got B, B, and A. The screw's right here. No. Okay, so here's the the two vertical stabilizers. Of course, they go out at an angle. Plastic with a screw that goes in there. Let's just go ahead and stick those in now. It'd be nice if this case was big enough to hold it with the wings in. I like these wings. You don't really technically need them. It wouldn't be that much taller with the wings on. Hmm. Let's test the camera crew's thought. Oops. Is it like this? Think that would stick in the box? No, I'm saying like yeah, it wouldn't could. be that much more to make it fit yeah, in the box could. together. Yeah, when you ship them, you have them. It would. Okay, so it came with a charger. Wow, that's interesting. This is a charger. It says LJ. 1111500, it's five volts at two amps input and 11.1 .1 volts at 1500 milliamps out. So we can go ahead and get that started charging and just show you what it looks like with the conditions on the battery. It is a USB plug. So why don't we, rather than using one of these big fancy chargers, which we probably will do as soon as we go off the camera, we'll just, uh, we'll just use one of these. Cause this is this is just like a run of the mill. This one happens to be 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps. So you just don't want to exceed the two, two amps from what I understand. So we'll just come over to an outlet. I've got a couple other V tolls here. This is the, X, the XKX450. That's probably my favorite one right now. And of course we got the Verizon Bobby option there, which is the uh, Mini convergence. Okay, so we got a red light solid and we have a flashing green light. That must mean it's charging. So before we get too much farther, why don't you stay there, camera crew? Okay. We're gonna go ahead and use the, we're gonna use a voltage tester. This is the uh, Spectrum Smart XBC 100. Check the balance. Okay, so we're 3.9 on each cell. So that's pretty reasonable, about 62% charge. <clears throat> so we're gonna plug that in. We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll clean up our mess and come right back, guys. Okay, guys, so I got a screwdriver. The Chinese included one was a little bit too small for comfort. So I got this one. Inside the bag, there were two small screws. So I got these two small screws out. Now, I'm not sure if the one we found might have been what you're supposed to use Show them in my hand, actually. These ones are a little bit bigger. Wait, hold on. There it goes. This is what we found in the bottom loose. This is what we found in the bag provided. I believe you may or are supposed to use those ones. So I'm just not 100% sure. So I'm just gonna use the bigger ones because I have two of them. So what I did was I took this goop just to hold it on the tip of my screwdriver because they're so small, they don't really work that well with the magnetic screwdriver. And so I have that held on and I wanna slide it into this I want to tighten it in here. Now you could get that to go, but my my apprehension is that if we force it in there cold, it's going to break the plastic. So I'm just going to heat this for a second or two. Kids, if you're doing this alone, get your parents to help you with this stuff. So you just heat it up just enough to kind of get the plastic to melt and deflect away nicely. Because you're not going to be able to push this hard when you're pushing through the foam. So I'm going all but about a turn. 
Okay, then I'll just let that cool. This one we did off camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in there. Okay, and then this this just amazing goop. It's just stuff, I use this for electrical projects. Do not use it on a foam, it'll probably eat it. So we'll pop this screw out. This one's had a chance to cool. So as you can see, it's in there and it goes straight. So you'll be able to get that when it's in the wing. This happens to be from the side that was a little bit dinged up from the box damage. That's gonna give you a little bit more lateral support here too. So of course you have to kind of do this blind. But now that it's already been started, it should just go for us. Oops, I wasn't down far enough. There we go. I can feel the good purchase now. See, I'm pushing against foam on foam on foam. So now that thing's not gonna come off there. If it comes off there, it's because I crashed and ripped the, <laughs> ripped the boom off. So we'll go ahead and undo this one. I'm sure it's had a chance to cool. Like I said, we only heated it for five or six seconds. So just enough to kind of get those threads heated up. And okay, we'll slide this down into this other groove. There's two keeper pins, very simple stuff. Of course, if you get the longer screws, just try the longer ones first. We seem to think those are probably what we're supposed to be going in there. And you can tell if this is seated all the way over here. See that? It's not pushed down all the way. And there we go. Now it's down all the way. If you don't get it to snap all the way down, you'll have a heck of a time getting these screws to actually make purchase in the plastic. It does kind of click a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of a click. But it's not click like stay in there, it's click like it's no. slipped in. No, yeah. So it's a little bit deceiving. Oh, I'm having a hard time telling if this one's going. It doesn't feel like it's going. Yeah, it feels like it's just kind of walking in there. You'll get that sometimes. There we go. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but I just slipped in because I was cut on the ledge. There we go, I can feel it pulling now. I'm gonna go to the Chinese screwdriver. These Chinese screwdrivers, this comes in all sorts of different airplanes. Mm -hmm. This is like one of my favorite little screwdrivers to be perfectly honest. I, I'm not joking at all because it's, it's just the perfect size for some of these really tight Chinese holes. Okay, I, I can't see that going anymore. It didn't come out, so I must have got it. Okay, so that being said, this thing has a lot better canopy than the XK450. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's a good size. It's a little bit bigger than the Mini Convergence. Uh, the Mini Convergence had some issues. People were having problems with it flying. Um, this wing, I mean, this is the coolest looking of the, of the three, I think. Um, probably has the highest quality motors and electronics, but this, I'm hoping flies like the XK450 because that was a really good flying airplane, helicopter, VTOL, quad. What do you want to call it? Try, try, multi-rotor. There we go. <laughs> so this is a T6 transmitter. It's got a power button, throttle, yaw, ailerons, and elevator, okay? So pitch and roll. So we're gonna put in four double A's. Flat goes to the spring. Flat goes to the spring. Flat goes to the spring. Again, double A size, nothing special there. Not included. Not included, yep. Okay, so this has a push button, not a tactile switch or something that you slide. So now we're just gonna run on, let's see if this thing's done. This one's been charging for what, like about 10 minutes? So we'll just pop it out real quick and show you what we got for charge. So we'll let that go. So we're at 76% of charge. So we got a little bit to go, no big deal. So we'll go ahead and get that plug back in. That's a pretty decent charge rate actually. Um, if you're at one, uh, 1,500 milliamp hours, it was 1 1.5 amps charge rate is what they said. So that means you're charging at 1.5 C, which is pretty good for a small El Cheapo. So we're gonna pause it, get some things picked up, and then we'll be right back. All right guys, so we've got this pack here. We're gonna just use this while that thing's charging because I wanna get this filmed. We got this little voltage alarm. We're gonna use that just as a safety precaution. Um, you never quite know exactly what these things are gonna do for low voltage warnings. 
I'm gonna set it to 3.6. And uh, an XT60 is the real popular size. The XT30 is kind of a weird size, but uh, this is XT30, and I actually really like the XT lineup of connectors. Um, they're strong, they're well done. I just don't have a lot of them. So first we're gonna turn on the, the transmitter. Make sure your throttle sticks down. Make sure you're in M mode. And then um, just everything is ready. So I'm gonna plug this in and protect yourself. Good, green and, green and red, I like that. Okay, so it's gonna eventually tell you when it's connected or bound up. Is there a binding procedure in that manual that you saw? Oh, I probably have to arm it. That's probably what it is. So I'm just gonna get these wires tucked in here nicely. I always forget with quads. I'm used to flying airplanes most of the time and airplanes bind a little bit different than the quads and multi-rotors. Okay, so that goes in there nicely, really good fit. This slips down there and snaps nicely. Okay. All the way up throttle, all the way down. Shuts off the lights. And then if you want to grab that manual, go to the edge of the counter just in case it goes haywire. Okay. So on most of these you have to do, there we go. So it sticks down and out. And then within so many seconds, you have to get a throttle to get it to take off. Okay. Over 50% throttle, and we'll wake it up. Really easy going. We'll fly into the living room here. Very good, simple response. I feel like I've got enough control authority to bring it back to me. I'm comfortable with it. Not hands off yet, but I gotta get a couple of clicks to trim in here. A little bit extra throttle. Okay, so when you saw what happened there was I landed on the edge of the counter. That's kind of a vulnerable spot for a multi-rotor because when you drop the stick below 50% on this, similar to the XK X450, it's gonna eventually go to idle and then stop. So it would have fallen, so I just wanted to stop that. But you have to be very careful. If you touch one of these quads while they're running, you're probably gonna get cut. So be real careful. All right, so um, I'm gonna rearm it, and I'm gonna try to get my trimming done inside because it's just a little bit windy. Okay, so throttle stick up past 50%, and we gonna take off. And I'm just gonna trim it back just a little bit. And then just a little bit of right trim. There we go. And a little bit more back trim. And it's uh, eh. it's almost hands off, guys. I don't I don't I want to say totally hands off yet, but it's hands off, guys. Look, nobody's controlling it. That's what should happen when you have a multi rotor like this. I mean, guys, look. flies really good guys um, very happy with that I gotta say a little bit disappointed in the mini convergence in terms of its controllability not a bad thing it's just it's not as good as I want it to be these things are ready to fly and they're cheap so I kind of expect them to fly good because this is what China does best now we haven't even seen some of the coolest features on this thing I can say right now between that and the XK4 or the XK X450, 
This thing looks a lot nicer, but this has lights on the bottom, okay? So lights on the top versus lights on the bottom, that is a factor, okay? So first of all, this is still on, but it's not armed right now. Oh, we do have lights on the top and the bottom, okay. I'm starting to develop an opinion shift here because I like the way this one looks a lot better than this and you'll think but it looks almost the same no it's very subtle differences these wings come out further here than here I like that it's cool looks like they molded in a point for an FPV or some sort of like GPS receiver that's pretty cool on both of these you can take off the front and then you can put your FPV gear I think this canopy looks a lot nicer Okay, I do like the decal work a lot better on this. You'll notice I took those stickers off on this one. They didn't last long, guys. <laughs> I took them off in the camera break. And uh, basically, this thing is flying really good. I've noticed a couple of little strings from the hot glue at the factory or that ch ch Chinese hair, I don't know. But either way, I like the stickers on this. I like the looks of this one in general a little bit better on the decal work, but I like the plastic work better on this one. They look like they might be using a very similar motor. This appears to be just a touch bigger. So let's weigh it real quick, guys. Um, as you know, if you're in the United States, you've got the uh, FAA has a drone registry where you have to basically sign up every couple of years and uh, admit to your addiction. If it's over 250 grams, oh, come on, China, 310 grams. So. Technically, you have to mark it. If you fly it inside, you don't have to do anything. What's so, the, that one? Well, see, that's the thing. Oh, it doesn't battery have battery in, in it. So I guess Man, I'm gonna plug this one. So we'll just, for good measure, I think we were just over on this one too. Okay, we're in the kilos. So 250 grams, 262. Mm -hmm. So all up weight, that's surprising. I figured this thing would be lighter. Let's, like this thing is a little bit bigger, I think. Hmm. But either way, I know you guys are gonna say, oh, Brian, I got mine and I crashed, it immediately broke all the servos. Yeah, if you crash these things, you're gonna lose your servos. In fact, if I crash mine in this video, we're gonna lose the servos. So just, just literally plan on it, guys. Um, if you make good landings and you don't have problems, the things are so cool. Because I mean, what other plane or heli or whatever you get armed, take it off. Can you take off in your living room and and really have virtually no experience and do this? I mean, that is pretty incredible. You could not have done that a few years ago. Now you could have got one of those little quads because they've really perfected those things. But this thing does more than just this. And we're gonna go outside and show you what it's like. So camera crew, if you want to go ahead and grab the door, I'm gonna grab my sunglasses, and then we're gonna fly right out. I'll just leave that there while I get my sunglasses on. Yeah, that's right. You get your hat and your sunglasses after you take off. Let's fly. You want to go behind the glass? Well, you want to be able to see them. I'll be careful. All right, camera crew, be safe. I don't know. Is it gusty out there? I don't know. We're going to find out, I guess. We'll find out, eh? Oh, the threshold's always the scariest spot, guys, because that's where all the turbulent air is. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> you made it with no problem. Are you coming, camera crew? Yep. Okay, so it's not dead calm. If you'll look over there, we've got a windsock, guys. So you want to kind of fly into the wind with these, but I'm going to show you the uh, vertical mode here in just a second. So we'll get a little altitude. The switch in modes is where you're going to lose these things, guys. Okay, so. Oh, that is so cool. Guys, that is so cool. I wanted to do that inside, but I just, I didn't know if I could trust it yet. It is got, it's kind of getting wanting to push back. Okay, back to the vertical mode. Look how transitionally smooth that is. It took virtually no time. I would almost be willing to do that in the living room now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly over by the garage just cause we can get away from some of this wind that's coming around the house. And we'll show you, man, what a beautiful backdrop in the sky there, camera crew. All right, this is something you couldn't do with the XK450, okay? The XKX450, look at the altitude. That is pretty phenomenal, guys. Look at that, and I'm forcing it forward because I've got my trim from the previous mode. You see that stick all the way out there? Mm -hmm. 
but otherwise it's hands off guys okay going back that you could not have done did i hear a beep let's see if we hear a beep guys i think it might have been my voltage alarm nope okay we're gonna go up here we're gonna try to go into the 6g mode and see what we get out of it okay that should be forward flight mode oh that is a really good transition getting into the power oh wow that is the best transitional transition i've seen from one of these what do you think hon i cannot see anything so hopefully oh, no. the people can i just switched because i saw that little stall action there let me go behind this here let's go over here for the camera crew's sake okay guys this is a vtol so you can use your direction of travel to your advantage oh uh, look at this beautiful grass guys we've been working hard to get this grass to come in just mowed it for the first time yesterday oh that's way better better yes okay here we go we're going to transition into three we're going to go up a little bit and then forward flight whoa a little wonky there at the end Okay, we're about 50% throttle. 60% throttle, aileron roll, elevator, kind of wonky. Okay, let's see if we can go straight to vertical. There's vertical. Oh, nice transition. Look at that weird cloud there. Do you see that weird cloud? Okay, going back to horizontal. That is some good transitions, guys. Oh, warning. Yep. Okay, landing or trying to. You hear that warning? Mm -hmm. Look at this, guys. That's full down stick there, okay? That's as slow as it's gonna come down. That's pretty crappy. That's the only thing I don't like so far. But I got a warning, so I just, I'm gonna come down and, and just be closer to the ground. Okay, a little bit of throttle there. We'll come out of that. And it is not dead calm, guys. That beat. Yeah, I know. I heard the okay. beat. That's why I came down, camera yeah. crew. No. This thing is easy to fly, folks. Look at this. Look at this. It's just, I mean, I don't want to say it's hands off because it's not that calm out. But I got to say, I didn't mess with the, I didn't mess with the transmitter at all. I basically gave it, what, like five or six clicks of trim yep. on the elevator and five or six trips of climb. Let's, we can't just land there. That's cheating. Let's go land on the truck at least. And then it disarms itself, but I'm gonna show you the other way, okay? So arm it, take back off. I'll just bring it out here. Okay, so the other way to do it is when you land, you can press this red button. So you hear that beeper? That means we're at 3.6 volts, okay? So nice landing. And then that shuts it back off. That actually switches between modes, but I believe that, that kills it too. Arm, take off. See, you can't do that to disarm, okay? Arm it, take off, land. See, you can't disarm that way. So you, you disarm with that. That one. Okay? Arm, take off. Oh yeah, we're losing juice now. Okay, let's fly back up in the front. I can probably get the door. Oh no, we're gonna lose battery. Okay, you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to open the door ourselves. <laughs> Guys, we gotta get, we gotta get back to our home station, okay? Hold on. Oh, the door is moving. Camera crew, help us. <laughs> Camera crew's here. That, guys, that is what I want out of a VTOL, okay? Now, I'm gonna be completely frank with you. If you get this thing and you crash it, you're going to break it, okay? So if you get this for your, you know, 10-year-old kid and they're not careful and they're maybe not skilled enough to fly it, 
They're probably gonna be disappointed. That battery is warm too. Okay, but did you see how high it went? That was pretty yeah. sweet. So we flew that on this battery. This is the one that came in the XK. Oh. Okay. So let's check the other one. Oh, actually, let's see how bad we actually drained it. I still have that Japanese Chinese hair on me. I'm sorry. To hear oh, that. geez, Dad, what's that? Three point six. Well, that's about right. So I can't complain about that. I think we need more. Camera crew. <laughs> this is me asking you. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll check this voltage first. Ninety-two percent. So that took us from four. It was four oh seven when you 407 started. Four oh seven to four forty two. So realistically, it's probably gonna take you about an hour. Figure on about an hour, forty five minutes to an hour to charge your pack yep. fully. And is that hot too? <laughs> Feel it. Whoa. Yeah, it's a little toasty. So you may want to do this like at your neighbor's house <laughs> or in the garage. <laughs> Just in case something goes wrong. Um, also, I want to show you the transmitter. I, I didn't spend any time talking about this, mostly because uh, I don't care. What, what's going to talk about? There's, I was in 80%. I was in low rates. There's 100%. So out in the wind, it would have helped a lot. Then there's mode two is what I'm running on. Mode two means elevator, ailerons, throttle, and rudder, or yaw, pitch, and roll. Okay. And then of course you've got the feedback on the screen, shows you what channel is moving and what percentage the output is. That's pretty sweet. Uh, not that it's really useful. And then there's a lock and an unlock. I don't know what that does. And then there's like an extra camera. So that's like a function button. Not sure what the function button does, but I anticipate that that function button must start or stop recording. And as you can see in here, folks, there's a plug in there. So this particular, brand, the XK brand, they all have an offering for like an FPV setup, a, a first person viewpoint where you put a camera on here and you could fly that through the goggles. Um, that's gonna be really fun when you go to vertical mode. <laughs> so, well, but I, I gotta say guys, I think this is, this is pretty sweet. Um, I also think this is pretty sweet. I think this is hard to fly, but it's also cool, okay? On an order of one to 10, I would give this satisfaction rating even with the damaged box and the potentially missing screw i would give this a satisfaction rating of about nine out of ten very satisfied very low input uh not very much cost involved very very low input you got to have four double a's the charger comes with it. everything is there okay on a scale of one to ten i would give this somewhere between seven and eight just because i thought the looks were a little bit lacking uh, but i still really like it it flew good when i first got it out still really good on a scale of 1 to 10, sorry Verizon Bobby, I'd give this a 6 or 7, but it's still fun for me to fly. Now I like this because I want to fly with my transmitter that I prefer, okay? I don't like using these hokey crappy ones, but at the same time if you fly, I believe this must be Futaba F FF, it doesn't say what it is, so I don't know what protocol it is, I'm not even going to say, it. but this just, it just feels so much better. and. You know, there's nothing you can do to replace that aside from get the protocol that the machine uses and then go with it. Now, I have a jumper, but even the jumper feels cheap. Um, I do like the jumper. It gives me some capability and a lot better precision on the controls. But this thing is ready to fly, guys. But that, that is amazing. That adds a huge expense Oh yeah, to this, that one. This thing here... <laughs> I got for like $410 shipped and I beat them up hard to get it for that price. This is discontinued, it's a DX18, 18 discrete channels, tons of programmability, awesome radio, but it's DSMX, DSM2. I believe this is FHSS, this is S, FHSS, I believe, which is Futaba. Um, this is of course Spectrum and they are different protocols. If you don't know anything about it, Watch my channel for a few years and you'll catch up or ask the questions below and I'll try to help you. Um, by the way, if you wanna buy this, check the link in the description below. It does help support our channel financially and it helps us with pats on the back from some of these manufacturers when they send us stuff like this to review, then you know it helps us to do more of it. So, and we, 
I can't show you in there, but there's a whole stack of boxes. So I can't wait to do more. My camera crew is so excited. <laughs> oh, and then these things, these are cheap. They're about two to $10, depending on where and how you buy them. If you buy multiple packs, you get them cheaper. This thing runs for about 40 bucks, worth every penny. If you're into this model addiction for any period of time, get one of these. This is a really good tool, okay? It's gonna give you more precision, more reliability. These things are cheap, throw away tools essentially, and let, let me just tell you something, I've thrown a lot of them away because they break when you crash your planes. So that being said, we are gonna fly again, and my camera crew and I are gonna go down to the woods to show you some more awesome flying. All right guys, so we're coming back with this uh, JJRC VTOL here, which is awesome. I think it's called an IMO2, but I really don't care what it's called. Just look in the description below, I got a link, so you can buy one if you want. We flew the XK450, the X450 in the snow, that was awesome, then immediately crashed it. Then we flew the Horizon Hobby Mini Convergence in the rain, and that was a little bit scary. Now we're gonna take this on a nature walk. So, one thing we noticed between takes is that we had to turn off our transmitter between sequences. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's a coincidence. Batteries in, throttle sticks up. Throttle sticks down, lights go solid, that means it's armed. Check it, and it shuts up, okay? So, sticks down and out, initiates it. Everything spins and then sticks back out. We'll shut it back off, okay? Just to demonstrate, sticks out, arms it, disarms it, okay? Sticks out and then you have to go over 50% throttle within so many seconds before it's gonna time out, which it did there. So we're gonna take out this side, guys. All right, you ready, camera? Yep. All right, here we go, here we go. Going through the door, camera crew's gonna get the door. Windy in here, guys. But we promised an inch walk. Gotta fly into the wind a little bit here, folks. Let her buy the chickens. The chickens are out for a nature walk themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and try to switch to 100% instead of 80% because it's pretty strong wind here. There's high rates. Oh yeah, a lot more, a lot more input. That should be better for what we're doing. So this is our yard, guys. You've seen some of it if you watch any of the bridge build videos. We're gonna try to walk where it's not messy. Got our voltage alarm in here, just to keep us in tune with reality. Make sure we don't over discharge anything. We had rain the last few days. Mowed for the first time since we planted this new grass. We'll take you back here, folks. Pretty good about a wind whipping through. Just out walking my uh, multi-rotor VTOL <laughs> here. Let's show them the waterfall. the waterfall guys it's usually kind of weird because the wind is like really absent down here typically but we're getting wind in different directions Isn't it windy down here? It's kind of weird. Yeah, well, that storm's coming in. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to walk where you are, camera crew. We'll just go up overhead. Okay, here we go. It's really pretty out here, guys. You don't get to see this very much in my videos. Except for the mud there, camera crew. Yep.
thing is responsive, very easy to fly. Let's take it over by the tip of the waterfall there. Oh man, I want so badly to fly down there, but <laughs> I know the consequences are pretty dire if I if I would lose it. Now remember guys, this thing is going to have more power to penetrate the air going one direction than the other. So just be aware of that. Okay, let's go over the bridge, hon. Show them the crazy tree. <laughs> this tree that's still alive, just growing sideways. We built, guys. This is our bridge for the tractor. Tractors. Got a couple of little brick areas. And then over here, got another little brick area. A little stairway we're going to work on there for the kids. That thing goes fast in this rate. That's 100 rate. Ooh, heard the first beat. That thing is just well behaved. It's like walking a dog. You want to get ahead of you if you go full. Got some firewood here, guys. This is the firewood we've been collecting. There's the house. So as you can see, we've got this big bull out here. Someday this could be a pond. We don't know yet. We're not sure. But it's really beautiful down here. Just a few weeks ago, there wasn't much growing down here. This is a tree we shot down here. This is a dead tree that we shot down. Right here. That's one, one of the trees that's in that bridge that we crossed. Very well behaved this thing is. Okay, camera crew, if you want to go by one of the trees, I got clearance. Now you can always tell this when you're uh, when you're flying a, a VTOL or some sort of helicopter. When you start giving it more throttle, you need to be mindful that you're probably gonna lose your uh, your power pretty quick. I want to do a vertical thing, but I'm sort of nervous to do it right here. Yeah, see, we're getting into the voltage alarm. Should I do the voltage, the vertical one time? There's a lot up, of wind here. Up to you, yeah, I know. Let's go over this. Let's go over the grass. We'll do it once. That is so cool, guys. Okay, back into vertical. That is really, really good response. So good, I'm gonna Enrique it. Okay, throttle sticks down. This is cool, guys. Really cool. I'm glad you got to go with us on a little nature walk. I've been meaning to do more of these type of things, but to be perfectly honest, it's just uh, it's been crappy weather until recently, and uh, we have we have to cut the paths and everything every year. So this thing is cool. I don't know if it's called the MO2 by JJRC or what it is, but check the link in the description below. Buy one for yourself. It is very good. It's all the best of the XKX450 and all of the leftovers from the Mini Convergence all wrapped into one. The only drawback, of course, is you're not going to be able to fly it on your Spectrum transmitter if that's what you're into, and that's what I'm into. But guys, come back for more. This is really cool. And by the way, just wanted to remind you, we only had about 80% charge on that pack, so camera crew is going to help me with this. We're going to go ahead and check the the battery. That is a pretty good amount of pretty good amount of flight time, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And we were 
We have our warning set to a conservative level of 3.6 volts DC. Uh, 3.6 volts in an airplane may not be such a big deal because you glide a whole lot more, um, or you can glide a whole lot more. You're not gonna be doing much gliding with this aircraft, okay? You're probably about between six and seven minutes, I would guess, of flight time. Yeah, but the thing is, we didn't have it at 100% either. So let's just see what the battery says. We're at 17% left, guys. That is a good amount of safety margin, okay? The reason that's a good amount of safety margin is getting down there is not necessarily very easy. <laughs> yes, it can be done. Should we take the people on more of a walk while we're out here? <laughs> I think they've probably... Have kinda, you had enough, YouTube? All looks if you've had like enough, this. then you can click away, but we're taking you. Come with me. Where are we going? We're going down by the trees. You've by seen one coffee tree. One tree, you've seen them all. That is not true, folks. <laughs> this is the this is where the water flows. And this is not the named creek. This is just the drainage ditch. Those trees there, the water goes under them. And then these are the areas that we're clearing right now. This is why we're busy all the time, guys. It's not because I don't want to bring to you more RC action. It's because moving around 10,000 pounds of logs takes a lot of work. Let's show them down here. This is some of the damage that happened the year we bought the property. Not the trees here. But you see the woodpeckers have taken to some of these because they're dead. And these are Kentucky coffee trees, so they actually, you can make poor man's coffee out of them if you want. Just don't eat the beans like raw or something. You have to roast them or... Yeah, because they're toxic. Otherwise they're otherwise. toxic or something. But you can see where the water's going, guys. It's like way down there if you can't see it on the video. Well, you can see it. Oh, you're going to be able to see it. It's going to be good. All right, guys. This could go on for hours, and it's not going to go on for hours. It's only going to go on for minutes. I told my camera crew this would be a short video. <laughs> she knows better. Come back for more.